Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaos Gym. Today with me I have Kyle Sablehouse, top four finisher at Athens Regionals. Say what's up, Kyle. What's up, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> Tell the world a little bit about yourself for those who don't know you by now. Alright, so I've been around forever now? I've been playing this game for way too long, like 13 years or something like that. Something crazy by now. It's true. It's true. Uh, but uh was pretty competitive uh, from like 06 until like 15. Uh, played in a bunch of world championships and stuff like that. And now I'm actually one of the commentators for uh, Pokemon uh, over on the US side. Yeah. Kyle does a pretty good job. He's He was recently at it, I think, about a year ago? Yeah. Yeah, and he's been, he's been killing it since. Um, came back, decided to play, and he tore it up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Talk a little bit about the deck, uh, I guess, what your process was picking it. I know you didn't really do much, but <laughs> tell us what, <laughs> what went on. Okay, so um, uh, I first decided that I was going to come to the event just because we weren't doing any streaming for it. So it's only an hour and a half away from my house. So I'm like, I, you know, I always go to Georgia Reno's whenever I can. So mm -hmm. um, I made the trip in the morning. It was like only, uh, it was a really short drive. Uh, we got, they got there, and I'm talking to Brad, I'm talking to Ryan, I'm trying to see what everybody thinks is a good idea. I talked to Ryan the night before, and I was just like, listen, tur uh, Turbo Dark Rise seems really good. If anyone can convince me not to, tell me now. And he couldn't convince me off it, so uh, I'm just like, I'd rather I'd rather be the deck that everybody has to beat rather than try to make do something crazy, especially in a field that's going to be as big as Georgia Regional this is. Yeah. Um, so we went with Turbo Dark Rai, and... It's, I mean, it's really fun. It's got a lot of, even for a deck that's so streamlined that only says Dark Pulse like 50,000 times, <laughs> you, you there's a lot of, like, intricate things you can do with your items and your supporters, so. Sure, sure, yeah. So, um, you get there, you pick up Turbo Dark. How are you feeling going into it? You're in registration, you've done all that, and you're, like, sitting down waiting for round one to start. How you feel? Well, I felt really confident, because everyone decided to play Greninja in our group. <laughs> so I'm like... I'm like, this matchup seems pretty good. Uh, I, I take a lot of prizes early, and if you guys... I mean, yeah, you make a comeback, but I have, like, ten energies on board, so I don't care. <laughs> um, nice. Other than that, there's just a lot of... Everybody has their own little taste that they like to play. There's not too much Rayquaza from what I had seen in the beginning. That changed as the tournament progressed. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, a lot of matchups looked really good, a lot of Mewtwo stuff, so I felt pretty confident with my deck choice. All right. I'll let you go right into your day one, then. All right. So, uh, let's see what I can remember from it. <laughs> uh, opening game of the tournament was against a, a Gardevoir. Uh, she was a really nice player. She's talking about, oh, no, I have to play Kyle. Uh, so, I'm like, oh, someone remembers me. Cool, let's do this. Uh, um uh, so I mean that that game was it wasn't too much. It was really just attack die attack die and then we're done. Um, my second round uh, was a more competitive deck uh, against like the Darkrai Dragons shenanigans. Just like mm. they just added the tur the turbo package to Hydreigon and uh, Giratina and stuff like that. I don't think he had Garbodor. I think it was just really streamlined. Okay. Um, but he. Played a Via Seeker and is only and instead of grabbing a Sycamore, he grabbed a uh, Flare Grunt. <laughs> so that game wasn't very competitive either, unfortunately. Um, I don't remember round three. I think <laughs> I, I, it could have been something, but uh, Grant Manley was my first like really competitive opponent. Um, mm -hmm. Playing the Jolteon shenanigans like. Jolteon, deck. Yeah, Jolteon, Garbodor, Glaceon, feels bad, man. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, uh, he's just going to try to set up one giant Jolteon. The only way that I really win this game, which isn't hard, is I, I just escape rope Lysander or Lysander escape rope, whatever, so that I can kill his one Jolteon and then I win the game from there. Mm -hmm. But uh, as soon as I was going to sickle more, I top decked my escape rope, so I tried to throw it away. And then my other escape was prized, and then the other game was just abysmal as well. And he's just sitting there with a nine energy jolty on, just knocking my teeth out. So it was a slow and painful death. 
<laughs> oh god. Um, from there, I played against. Not particularly sure about the order of it all, but I played against um, a Mewtwo Garbodor that was fighting Fury Belt instead of um, the Mega. Just sure. a okay. really streamlined version of that. Just attach a crap load of energies, max elixir them all down, and laugh at you. And I'm just I, I, my deck's just beat to built to beat that. I just hit them for 40 with Oblivion Wing and a Fury Belt or a Verse Valley. Get a little bit of damage on there, and then that's an easy two shot. Mm -hmm. um, damage swap does nothing against it if you play your, your cards right. And don't just go crazy and put 170 on them because you want to. Um, <laughs> which a lot of people do. Let's put 180 <laughs> here and see what happens. Yeah. I don't think you can kill me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was actually a pretty fast match for me. Um, I drew dead against this um, Regice um, Lugia Ninja Boy thing. Um, it was, I think it was like Long Boy's um, idea. It seems like it was something that he created because he was playing it as well, and okay. he's pretty innovative. Um, but the guy was really nice as well. Uh, but I drew dead in what, at least one of the games, maybe so. But um, his deck just didn't really work well against mine. I, I don't really care about Red Ice. I'm Lysandrine around it. I'm using my escape, my uh, Enhanced Hammer and my Flare Grunt, and he's just having a hard time finding the double colorless energies. So I got through that pretty quick as well. From there, um, my winning in, like, compared from top 32 at least, was yeah, yeah. Uh, Garbodor, Evil Tall. <sighs> so easy. <laughs> he was he was a great player, but that matchup, I love that matchup. I, I eat it for breakfast. He asked for an ID, and I'm just like, I have to take these three points from you, man. I'm sorry. So, um, we, we played it out. It was really easy two games, unfortunately, for him. And then uh, Nathan Nathan Brower in the last round was playing Rayquaza, and I, I asked him for an ID because I'm like, I'm going to lose this. <laughs> and he's like, no way, buddy. So um, we played the first game out. Um, I had a really, really good start, and he, he had an okay start, like nothing too crazy. And I actually won the first game which you should just not be in the game at all. Mm -hmm. um, game two, he's drawing so bad. Um, he has just a Magir 90X, and I knocked out his Mega Rayquaza that had no energies, mm -hmm. and uh, he top-decked an Ultra Ball, and it turned into a 210 damage Rayquaza knocking me out, and I'm just like, okay. I tried, to, I tried to finish the game, but he ended up winning, and then game three went to time. Uh, I'm about to lose on prices because the matchup is so bad. Top deck the delinquent slammed it down. He can't one shot an ex and I win. So I was like, I'll take my one point. I got my 22. I'm good. Let's see what happens day two. All right. <laughs> I guess you can just jump into day two then. Okay. So, um, the one big point about um, my day one performance was getting to 22 points sounded really good, but I almost would prefer to be at 21. Just the way that. The, the, it was set up because there were so many bad matchups in the 22. I just happened to get really lucky and paired up against one of the few people that wasn't just like an auto loss straight up because there were like multiple Rayquazas and uh, Jolteon decks and stuff like that where I'm just, I, I don't feel very confident in the matchup. But I got Jimmy Pendarvis playing the Ninja Repeat Ball shenanigans, which it's a good deck. Um, a lot of Greninja players feel like it's it's... 50-50 your favorite, just depending on who's better. But um, it, it, for me, it really just feels like I take so many early knockouts that it's just hard to make a comeback once I have four prizes and you really haven't disrupted my board. Uh, experience share energies just start to add up, and it just it felt favored. But my for the for the game to be competitive as it was, uh, I started Shaman. Then I started Hoopa. Then I started Shaman again as my three starters for the for the, the whole round. Oh God! He's rolling just as bad, just not in his opening hands necessarily, just off of ends. When he would uh, go for the um, water duplicate, it was the turn that he drew a Froki or uh, well, uh, drew a Frogadier. So it was just always something really unfortunate happening on his side too. Um, I remember specifically game three after two pretty weird games. Uh, my opening start was the Shaman. 
I played down my shame and I threw experience shares on both of them, attached my energy and then tried to sycamore and then I'm just, I still drew nothing, uh, not even a Pokemon to, to really start attacking with. It was really ugly, but he's sitting there with a Froki trying to bubble me. So uh, I won the battle with two people just staring at each other with theme decks. Uh, <laughs> round 11, I played against the um, future winner of the tournament, Chris. Uh, mirror match. Uh, I felt like if I, if you lose the mirror match, you don't even deserve to be in top eight, honestly, just because of how how this deck runs. Like if you're running hot, you're gonna win. Uh, Max Elixir's like crazy. It just seemed to be it seemed to be his day, honestly. He was just rolling through, and it, it was really hard for me to try to keep stay in that game. I won game two pretty decisively, but he won the opening coin flip. So going first in that matchup was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, the next round we played against uh, Zebstrika. Um, he played the Zork instead of uh, a Garbodor or uh, Octillery like Dylan Bryan did. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was okay, but um, really just that matchup comes down to if I can knock out some early Pokemon like a Combi, uh, especially if I can do it with the uh, um, Baby Evil Tall with like a 40 Oblivion Wing from the Fury Belt or the Reverse Valley. And uh, I, I mean, I played double Shaman. I would Sycamore, and I still couldn't draw ten extra damage to really get myself there. Um, I went really aggressive, just trying to get those early knockouts because that deck, once it gets rolling, it's just really hard to stop. Um, and uh, I played, I played the same scenario out twice with him. Game one, I lost, but um, game two, I end him to one. He doesn't draw it. Game three, I end him to one. He does draw it. So. <laughs> It's just kind of how it went there. Um, the next round after that, I played against James Hart. Um, they have a joke uh, in Tennessee with him where it's not a Georgia regional unless you play Kyle Sablehouse because me and James always play each other every single time. I, I swear I play him so many times in Georgia. Um, so it's always good to play him. Uh, he was playing the Mewtwo. Um, and we really had a, a back and forth series as well. His opening for our first match was our first game was really crazy. He, he just went off and I couldn't uh, compete with it. Mm-hmm. I did everything that I needed to do, but it was just every time I, I would knock out a Mega Mewtwo, he'd just have another one ready to go. Uh, and I just didn't have enough energies on board. But um, game two, I got everything that I needed. In game three, I had a disgusting, amazing start where he just had Trubbish and passed uh, with a Mewtwo on bench. And I was able to get like three energies for it. I got for like four energies on board with a Fury Belt, uh, Escape Rope into my Evil Tall with a Hex Maniac. I was just like, oh, there's no way I'm losing this game. Oh, dear and, God, dude. Yeah, so uh, that was pretty commanding for game three. And I really needed that because I, I honestly, at that point, I didn't think I was going to be making top cut just because even at 28 points right there, um, he it's just my resistance was pretty shot because I had just lost two games in a row. Um, and then finally we went into the last game and uh, I'm paired against uh, a guy playing Evazol Garbodor, or I believe that's what he was playing. Uh, and I'm like heavily fit. No, he was playing Mewtwo as well. Excuse me. And um, I, I felt favored in that matchup. Of course I had just come off a game where I had beat it and then I had beat it earlier in the tournament, but he was only at 27 points and he knew that he couldn't make cuts, so he actually just conceded to me, which is really nice of him, just knowing that he couldn't make it in. So we're in top eight. Feels great. <laughs> I really didn't have any expectations coming into the event. I just missed playing in tournaments, so I wanted to get back in and mm-hmm. see what it's see what I've been missing out on. And, and then you top eight the biggest regionals to date. <laughs> yeah, it worked out pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're in top eight. Uh, I think you got paired up against uh, Vespa Queen, right? Um, the opening match I got paired up against uh, the number one seed, Rayquaza. Okay. I was actually too scared to look at the board and see what my spot was, so Ryan had to run over there and check on it. He gives me the thumbs up on the eighth seed. I'm like, all right, cool, we're in. It's all good now. <laughs> but then we get the bad news that the one seed is Rayquaza. There's actually three Rayquazas in top cut, so I'm like, ah, whatever, I guess we're done here. <laughs> it, was, it was nice while it lasted. Um, but I sat down with the, the one seed and we were talking a little bit before the game. Uh, he knew that he was going to be losing to the, the event, uh, Vespa Queen in top four, most likely, after he beat me. 
<laughs> so we were both pretty somber <laughs> knowing that our, our fates were sealed. Um, but we played the game out, of course. Um, uh, the opening game, I get to go first. I get a pretty good start, and uh, I, I stole it because um, he was playing his Skyfields very early before he really got anything going. Like, he didn't have attacking happening right now. He was still trying to get a setup when he had a Skyfield. So he Skyfield, I reverse Valley. He Skyfield, I reverse Valley. He Skyfields, I delinquent. He Skyfields again, I delinquent. He's out of uh, any any more Skyfields, obviously, and he doesn't have um, a, a way to get him back. Mm -hmm. So I, he's locked in at 150 at that point, and I, I'm going to win a battle where we're two-piecing each other because my deck's just built for it. So I, I actually end up stealing game one from him there. Game two, he does Rayquaza things. Uh, I cry and I'm dead by turn three. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> like I, I was just like, oh, uh, this is why we hate the matchup. I'm not going to be able to come out of this. And then game three, um, my start was okay. Uh, I didn't really have many options as far as supporters, um, but I did get to um, Hex Maniac him on the opening turn when he had a Dragonite. Uh, and I got to put some damage down on him early, like 100 damage on the Dragonite um, by turn two. And he had a pretty slow start, only because he prized a, a Shaman or two. Um, he wasn't really able to... He, he got some stuff going, but he just didn't have attack power just yet. So it was it was what I needed if I'm going to win the game, of course. Um, I, I was able to pull up some shenanigans, Lysander up the um, Dragonite that ran away, steal some early prizes, uh, and he he brings up his Rayquaza, and he's starting to to beat down on me. But he made a mistake in uh, not checking to see if the Shamans were prized. He Ultra Balled uh, when he had very little hand. If not, I, that might have just been his whole hand at that point, honestly. Um, and he has nothing there. But he has his Skyfield and, like, seven Pokemon. So right there, I Delinquent. Uh, it was either get rid of one card or no cards. I can't remember. But um, I got rid of his Skyfield, and I felt really good at that point. He's in top deck mode. He draws for the turn. It's like an energy, but he's able to take a knockout, so he gets two cards. And uh, I immediately just play my own stadium and then delinquent it out so that I can get rid of his hand. And he has nothing left at that point. Uh, he, he did end up like top decking via Seeker in the end and making it a game, but I had, I, I had enough energies on the board at that time where I could just... Um, find my Lysanders and take easy knockouts. So I survived and ended up beating the Rayquaza. Everybody was really surprised. Uh, so that was that was nice to have a match like that. Feels good. Yeah, I really didn't think it was going to happen, so I was I was glad when it did. Yeah, and now you've got a semi-favorable matchup in Vespa Queen going into top four. Right, all right. Um, looking at how, how top eight um, panned out, um, we were surprised that Chris was able to, to survive um, the Rayquaza he played against, especially because I believe he had a deck list error and had a, uh, a game loss. He did. Um, no, he, uh, I think he posted and he said he had two of his sleeves were considered unintentionally marked. Gotcha, okay. Or something like that. And so he had to re-sleeve entirely. And they were, like I think, two of his like max elixirs, I want to say. Okay, yeah, those are important. <laughs> so he, was so he, got, he got a game loss, and then he ended up pulling off the same miracle that I did except in two games, which I was just stunned that someone else was able to do it as well, but good for him. His, his list is more fine-tuned for it. He's got the Silent Labs, I don't. Right. But, um, so, so he pulled that off. I'm like, okay, anything can happen now. Uh, all the Mega Rayquazas got knocked out of top eight in that, in that um, opening top eight uh, round. And I, it was just... Uh, a, a dark ray playing a Vespa Queen and a dark ray playing a Vespa Queen in top four. Um, so I did get I got paired against Dylan Bryan. Uh, he's playing Octillaries. He's playing Lucky Helmets. Uh, I don't have any way to get rid of anything like that. So he was going to get his draw. He was going to get going. So I knew that to win this matchup, I really just need to get the early attacks off. Make sure that I get a prize advantage. And um, when we do get into that prize exchange of one prize for two prizes that I've taken enough prices to where it doesn't matter, and maybe I can possibly punish a shame and drop or something like that in, uh, near the end of the game. But uh, I didn't get to do any of that. <laughs> my my playable supporters, uh, draw-wise, consisted of like a turn 5 Sycamore, and then the next game I got like a turn 4 or 5N. So it, it was really ugly. We, we had fun, of course, because we've made 
uh, we played top four um, two years ago against each other, and I came out on top in that game. Mm-hmm. After losing to him day one and day two, uh, I beat him in top four. So uh, it, it was I, I got my 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 piece of him that game, and uh, he got his revenge uh, a few days ago. Yeah. Well, I guess can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was very happy with the top four finish um, for just coming out of my suit and <laughs> over to a Pokemon tournament. Uh, yeah, I guess for everyone watching, I don't think Kyle is going to go for his invite, even though he got that top four. I think he's still going to be at the desk. Yeah, uh, I mean, no promises, of course, for uh, right. if, I, if, I do, if I get to do the internationals and world championships, but uh, hopefully I'm fortunate enough to be on the teams for that. Um, that, that's that's the plan at least. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So after the entire tournament ends, would you change anything about the deck? Not really. I mean, there's just it's just if you're gonna change the deck, you have to change the um the stadiums. Uh, the, the, it's just two different ways to run the deck. You can either run it like Chris did, or you can run it like I did. Uh, it just depends on what you think you're gonna play against. If you think that. You want to um, help some matchups with the Silent Lab and shut down some early Shamans, of course, then you go Chris's route. If you're trying to do that little bit of extra damage that you know you're going to need in some of these uh, heavy EX decks, like when you're playing against Mewtwo and you're playing the Mirror Match uh, with the Fighting Fury Belt and the Reverse Valley, it's it's just really hard to say no to that. It's, it's so, so many times I was able to sneak out the big knockout that my opponent just wasn't expecting just with having 30 extra damage from a, a Max Elixir and a Fury Belt or a Valley Sneak In. Yeah, that's, uh, I guess, yeah, you're right. There is two ways to play it. I mean, if I had played I probably would have played the Lab version. Uh, that was my... Uh... Yeah, I, like, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't really know too much about it coming in just because every regional that we cast is expanded. Mm-hmm. So it was my first taste of Standard in a long time since, like, Worlds 2015. Um, but seeing it and playing against it, I can see how both are really good. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let the people know where they can find you, Kyle. Um... Well, I have a Facebook. The problem is my last name, of course. And I'm Kyle, not Ryan. That's another thing that happens, of course. But <laughs> it's um, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Stable House is uh, S-A-B-E-L-H-A-U-S, not house, like a family home. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you can find me on Twitter. It's just K Sable House, uh, and then Facebook, of course, Kyle Sable House. Um, and uh, looking forward to doing a little more with Chaos Gym, of course. Uh, so you'll be able to find me there too. Thank you so much for being here, Kyle, and congrats on your run. Thank you. It's always good to be here. <laughs>